Hello, my name is David Butler. I'm a full-time author, uh, novelist, poet, playwright, short story writer. Um, I very much date my arrival as a short story writer to the Maria Edgeworth Festival. I won the short story section way back in 2001 with my first decent short story, No Greater Love, and that became the, um, the foundation story of my first short story collection some years later. I have a second collection coming out um, this year from Arden House called Fugitive. I've also, um, I was runner up a couple of times in the Maria Edgeworth Poetry Competition and I actually won it last year. And again, my third poetry collection will be coming out later this year is entitled Liffy Sequence and that's with Dara Press. So I thought I'd begin by reading the poem that won last year's Maria Edgeworth Award. Um, it's from the Liffey Sequence section, which is a series of 12 related poems following the River Liffey. And this one is entitled Liffey Boardwalk. Single file, they line the rail and I the blow-ins are ride a wave of falling air to scrap over a sodden crust. They're bickering, old as Viking gutturals and the march of Cambrel Normans. Seagulls, are the first citizens of a town built on scraps. Chain and manacle dug from tidal loam. Claymore, pike, English musketry, they've seen it all. Farther down, a drunken spat erupts over beer cans. And who's to say it hasn't all the bitterness of civil war? The gulls are unmoved. The wind shifts, the tide changes. This is a much earlier poem, but again, it, <clears throat> it was inspired along the River Liffey. It's entitled River Gods. And I'm going to dedicate this one to my late sister because it was her favourite of all my poems. River Gods. I'd always been horrified by the thought of river gods, their webbed skin, their breath of must and decay, their muscles quirky as eels. Petted creatures were sure to live in the long tresses of beard that dangled from their mouths, glutted and soft with their dull monotony of swallowing. And to think of the bathing nymph, how the young flesh must recoil at the first touch before she is dragged down, that set my skin writhing. I was wrong. River gods are harmless creatures, too awkward to walk on dry land without stumbling. A few of the poems together formed a sequence in which I called Dublin, and it was published in Poetry Ireland um, last year when, when um, the late Ivan Boland was the editor. So I'll, I'll uh, dedicate these three to her, I suppose, to her memory, a marvelous poet that she was. Wake to the clang and clamour, the cowbell and slow glissando of a tram as its heft glides across Houston Bridge, townward. Wake again to the roasting tang, the old olfactory memory, the nut waft of bitter hops over the vats of James's gate. Wake to a new day ascending the granite keys that channel low spangling sunlight up the tidal drift of the Liffey. Part two, like something half hatched or premature, trailing the open cocoon along pavements, neon stained and uninterested. Like detritus the sweet sweepers haven't lifted. Like an afterbirth of the city, stubborn and unruly as graffiti on its dreams in glass and asphalt. Like the return of the repressed, the ghost of the life not lived, anemic, persistent as guilt. And part three, return to the cardboard layer, to its subterranean dank, to the soiled rough sleeping bags packed liminally. Return to the rumor of wings under train rattled vaults. Along the paving, pigeon spatter pollocked autumnally. Return again to no man's land to a country of sleeplessness, 
return to the grayscale anxieties that prowl nocturnally. And I'll finish with a poem entitled Dockers, 1930. First light, the descent from the tenements, flat caps and donkey jackets, shoulders hunched against an easterly would skin you. Keen eyed, skint, eager for the scrimmage about the rough pulpit to catch the reed, the foreman meeting out who works, who idles. A hard graft for the chosen, scant light a slant through moiling dust inside the dusky hold of a collier, where rope muscled, calloused hands, rough handle shovel halves, scraping, angling, hacking irascible black flecked phlegm until, begrimed like pantomime blackamoors, they emerge to carry their thirst like a wage and pay out the bitter tithe, the matchbox shilling that buys the wink and nod. It's that our star. Thank you very much, and I'd like to wish the Maria Edgeworth Festival every continued success. Bye. -bye.